Hi, I'm Dr. Diana Howard, Vice President of Technical Development for Dermalogica and the International Dermal Institute. I'd like to talk to you about sensitive skin. We know from statistical studies that anywhere from 50 to 90 percent of the population deem themselves to have sensitive skin. Now this is a huge span from 50 to 90 percent depending on the survey that you look at. I attribute this to the fact that there's really no hardcore medical definition of what is sensitive skin. As a matter of fact, sensitive skin is really a term that we often use at Dermalogica and the International Dermal Institute to refer to those people that are born with that skin condition that makes them a little bit more reactive, as opposed to somebody with sensitized skin, which might find their skin to be a little bit more reactive as a result of environmental exposure or physiological phenomena, such as, let's say, the skin condition rosacea. Regardless of whether you have sensitive skin or sensitized skin, the term has generally been um, accepted to mean it is a lay term for individuals who find themselves to be um, a little bit more intolerant to topical application of products to their skin or procedures or even environmental conditions. They're more intolerant than the general population at large. Regardless of whether you're born with it or it's something that happens later on in life from the environment or your own physiology, it manifests itself in very similar symptoms. These symptoms can be very translucent skin. Um, you can see capillaries close to the surface. You can um, have stinging and burning and irritation. You can have stinging without any irritation. We call those people stingers. Sometimes people with sensitive or sensitized skin are more prone to dry, flaky patches, and we see a distinct correlation between dehydrated skin and an individual who tends to be more sensitive or sensitized. We often see small bumps, and as a matter of fact, many dermatologists and people who experience these small bumps as a result of, let's say, some topical product applied to their skin, attribute it more to acne rather than a sensitive skin condition. So there's lots of different manifestations of sensitive or sensitized skin, and inflammation often accompanies many of these. What causes or what are the triggers of sensitive skin? Well, it can be anything as simple as just maturity, aging. As we get older, some people find that their skin becomes more sensitized, and some people find their skin is less sensitized. It's really an individual thing. We can have cosmetic products. You may be prescribing product to your client in the skincare center, but you may not be sure what they're supplementing at home with um, and cherry picking other products and using on their skin. People tend to overuse product. If you've recommended an exfoliant for use at home and they love the results that they're getting and you've recommended it twice, maybe three times max a week, you know how people, consumers tend to be. If a little is good, more must be better. They love the look that they get on their skin. They may decide that they're going to use it five days a week. They can overexfoliate their skin, which can lead to sensitization. We know certain ingredients, whether it be lanolins or DNC colorants or even products that have alcohol in them, tend to sensitize the skin. We know that climatic conditions are a real culprit here. As a matter of fact, climatic conditions is the number one um, factor that most people who perceive themselves to have sensitized skin um, attribute it to. They see flare-ups more when the weather changes, whether the weather goes cold, they're in a dry, heated environment inside, or they're in an airplane. Um, the 10% relative humidity in an airplane is notorious for triggering a sensitivity flare in many individuals. We can have impaired barrier function. Oftentimes, if you have a client, especially a man who comes in and he uses soap and water in the shower on his face, and he might complain that, well, he doesn't come in normally to have a skin care treatment because he doesn't like the, he feels stinging and irritation. Well, we all know that soap and water has literally stripped the natural lipids of the skin, and so he's compromised that barrier lipid layer and made his skin more prone to sensitization. We know when skin is dehydrated, it gets these little microscopic fissures and cracks, and that's a portal or an entry for chemicals from the environment as well as topical products to irritate and inflame that skin. We know that our diet, whether it's as simple as a cup of coffee or alcohol, especially red wine, or certain dairy foods or spicy foods can trigger sensitization in people. We know that hormones, a woman's monthly cycle, whether she's in perimenopause or even menopause and pregnancy can also trigger sensitivity flares. We know that the environment, 
whether it's pollutants in the air or just uh, changes in the environment from going indoors to outdoors can stimulate sensitivity. And finally, the biggest culprit, the second biggest culprit, weather, changes in weather being the first, the second tends to be stress. And we're going to talk about this more in a moment. So what is the biology behind sensitive skin? Because in order to understand how we at Dermalogica developed the ultra-calming line of products to treat sensitive skin, you need to understand what exactly is happening in the skin. So I'd like to share with you some newfound studies that we've done at the International Dermal Institute. Everybody knows that if you get a cut on your skin, trauma to the skin, or let's say an infection, a certain series of events occurs in the body. This is the body's immune response, and this is to protect the skin and the body as a whole, as well as to prevent or to repair the skin and the tissues. This is known as an immune-mediated um, inflammatory response or immune, an immunogenic response of inflammation in the skin. So that's one of the factors that we have to consider. However, at the International Dermal Institute, we've spent the last five years studying a new phenomenon, and this is called neurogenic inflammation. And this is quite fascinating, because what scientists have discovered now is that when you are exposed to chemicals in your environment, those chemicals get, maybe get on your skin, and we have chemical receptors on our skin that bond with those chemicals and trigger a whole series of reactions occurring in our body. The first thing that happens is the release in the, uh, from the nerves of neuropeptides. These are substances such as CGRP or even substance P. These neuropeptides then can provoke certain pro-inflammatory mediators to lead to the whole inflammatory process, which virtually looks identical to an immunogenic response of inflammation as well. Now there's another factor here. We talked about how chemicals can bond with certain chemical receptors in the skin, leading to a neurogenic inflammation. But there's also something known as stress. We all know it very well. When we are stressed, these same neuropeptides are released from our nerves, and these, this also leads to the neurogenic inflammation. So what we have going on here is not only immunogenic inflammation, but neurogenic inflammation, which also contributes to the sensitive skin condition. Now, you compound this with the fact that we know people with sensitive skin tend to have a compromised lipid barrier. We know now that in the stratum corneum, the layer that is really responsible for protecting that skin, protecting it from water evaporating out, as well as from chemicals in, in the environment, from penetrating deep into that skin and causing irritation, is all protected by the natural lipid barrier. This is made up of ceramides and essential fatty acids and cholesterol or sterols in our skin. And it's not any one of these three lipids that's responsible for this protective function, but it's the ratio of all three. When the ratio gets thrown out of kilter, that's when you can end up with a sensitized skin condition. Now what you need to be aware of is there's many things that your clients may do at home or you may even be doing in the skincare center that can compromise this lipid barrier protective layer. These include exposing the skin to strong acids such as AHAs, which is another reason why we at Dermalogica and the International Dermal Institute recommend lactic acid over glycolic acid because of that ability to strip the natural lipids um, when you use glycolic. Strong alkali, if somebody's using soap or another cleanser at home uh, that isn't pH balanced, it will strip the lipids. Chemical sunscreens can, certain emulsifiers that are used in products, uh, penetration enhancers like propylene glycol, and even stress. All of these things can impact that lipid barrier that's so important to protecting the skin from becoming sensitized. When the lipids are are exposed to UV radiation or even chemicals from the environment or injury, what happens is the lipids that are comprising the membranes of our skin cells start to break down. Certain enzymatic reactions occur and they release something called arachidonic acid. This is a fatty acid which then triggers an arachidonic acid cascade. The end result is, you guessed it, inflammation. So we've got a lot of different factors all contributing to the sensitized skin condition or inflammation. So what do we do? What are the options that we have to control this in our client's skin? Well, first of all, the easiest thing is to identify your triggers and then control your exposure to them. We also can 
protect our skin from pollutants in the air, as well as from environmental stressors. Use a sunscreen. If you have sensitive skin, use a physical sunblock, titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. You'll have zero irritation um, to that uh, physical sunblock, and yet you get the protective mechanism of these sunscreens against the UVA and the UVB. Reduce the stress levels. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Optimize the barrier function. Reduce that inflammatory cascade. And finally, use the Dermalogica Ultra Calming products. When we developed these products, we developed them to do many things. We wanted to calm that inflammation. We wanted to soothe the redness, the irritation, and the itchiness that's so often associated with a flare-up of sensitized skin. We wanted to control the immunogenic as well as the neurogenic process that's occurring in our skin. We want to reinforce those barrier lipids, stimulate not only the synthesis of new ceramides and cholesterol in the skin, but also to add surface lipids that add a, add a protective function. We want to hydrate those tissues because remember, there's a correlation between dehydrated skin and skin that has a tendency to be sensitized. All of the ultra-calming products developed by the International Dermal Institute for Dermalogica are all dermatologists tested. So what did we do that we, what did we put in these products that makes them so unique? We developed something that we call the ultra-calming complex. This is the result of years of research that we've done here at the International Dermal Institute and found the best vehicle or mechanism that not only controlled the actual inflammation associated with a sensitivity flare-up, but also help prevent future flare-ups and address not just immunogenic inflammation, but neuroinflammation as well. And so what we did is we developed this complex that consists of oat or aveno kernel extracts with its active aveno anthramides, which I know many of you are familiar with, how for years people have recommended with, for sensitivity flare-ups that you use um, oats. Uh, so we've been recommending this here at Dermalogica for years, but now we've uh, isolated out of the oats the Avena anthramides, which is the actual active fraction. We know for a fact that it's active at 45 parts per million, and we went ahead and in all of our products are using it at 100 parts per million to really maximize the soothing anti-irritation benefits of the oat kernel active. We combined this with ginger extract as well as bisabolol, which is isolated from the chamomile plant, and in conjunction, we put a booster of a synthetically made avena anthramide into this complex along with a very special agent. This agent is called Borhavia, and it's from also known as red hogweed. And what Borhavia root extract is, is in an extract of actives with polyphenols that controls neurogenic inflammation. So you see this complex was designed to work synergistically to not only treat and calm existing inflammation, swelling, irritation, and itching that the skin may be experienced, but also to prevent future neurogenic and immunogenic response from occurring. So we're treating as well as being preventative in this complex. We combined our complex with a Com combination of lipids that ex consists of sunflower oils, which are very rich in their ceramides, avocado, which we used for the high phytosterol content, as well as the oil of evening primrose, which is an excellent source of gamma linoleic acid, one of the key essential fatty acids that's necessary for reinforcing the lipid barrier layer. So ultra-calming products developed by the International Dermal Institute for Dermalogica is serious relief for sensitized skin. Now that we understand a little bit more about what causes inflammation and sensitivity in the skin, as well as the complex and the ingredients that we developed for the ultra-calming line, let's take a closer look at the products.